Welcome back, everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about Capture One, and there's something very significant because as of today, we now have Capture One on the iPad. So many of you saw the announcement a while back and knew this was coming. I've actually had the chance to beta test this for a while now, and we're gonna get into that in this video. And I also had an opportunity recently to sit down and have a discussion over Zoom with Rafael Orta, who is the CEO of Capture One. And we had a really wonderful conversation covering a lot of topics like the culture at Capture One, their approach to software design, their approach to doing updates. And so I wanna share some of that with you. But first, let's talk about the big news, which is this iPad app. So the first thing that you're gonna notice in here is how clean the user interface is. In fact, I'm gonna go on a limb here. I think this is one of the best user interfaces I've seen on any photography app on the mobile platform. It really is that good. And so if you're familiar with Capture One, you're going to pick this up pretty quickly. And even if you're not familiar with Capture One, it speaks to iPad users too. And so the way it works is you have a series of tools. When you bring up one of these tools, it is dial based. So you're gonna have tools on the left, you're gonna have the dials on the right. Of course, you can go up to the preferences and switch that if you so desire. But the workflow is going to be very familiar to most of you. So if you go through the tools on the left-hand side of the screen, the first one is for rating. And so you can rate each image. You simply slide the images to go to the next one. And you can also assign color labels as well. The second tool down is going to be for applying styles and presets. And it comes with a lot of presets sets already shipped. Some of these you've seen in Capture One. And if we move down to the next set of tools, these are going to be your editing tools. And we'll start with the keystoning tool where you can actually adjust the rotation as well as some of the three-dimensional aspects to straighten up an image. Under that, we have all of our tools for image editing. So from top to bottom, we have the black and white tools where you can actually go in and you can actually adjust the color balance. Under that, we have the white balance tool. Below that is for setting our exposure. So we've got exposure, contrast, brightness, and saturation. If you've used Capture One, you're gonna see these are grouped in a very familiar way. Under that, we have our high dynamic range tools, which include setting a white and black point, as well as adjusting highlights and shadow detail. Under that, we have clarity. So in here, we're gonna have clarity and structure. Under that, we have dehaze. Beneath that, we've got the color editor. And if you've used this on the desktop version of Capture One, you're gonna be very familiar with it here. It really allows you to go in and dial in specific color tones in terms of hue, saturation, and really balance your image out the way that you want to see it. And under that, we have the vignetting tool, which gives you several options for elliptic on crop, circular on crop, or just circular. And finally, the last tool contains all of our sharpening, noise reduction, film grain, and moiré adjustments. Now, what I really love about the user interface is there's no sliders. And Sliders have always bothered me on a mobile type application, so we have dials. And in this case, you're gonna select any one of these tools and you're gonna use the dial on the opposite side of the iPad to make your adjustments. And what's really cool about this is when you turn the iPad, the user interface will correspond with the orientation that you're holding the iPad itself. So what makes this really cool is, let's say you're editing a landscape image and maybe the next one that comes up is a portrait orientation aspect ratio. Well, you can turn the iPad and take advantage of the full screen. And this makes editing so much easier and so much nicer. The other thing that's really impressive about this, and it's hard to tell from these videos because you don't know the resolution that these images are at, but even with really high resolution, these are all raw files and the rendering is pretty much instant. There's no lagginess to the app. It's very snappy and very responsive. When I had the opportunity to sit down with Rafael Orta and talk about the iPad specifically, he offered some really interesting thoughts on why this was the right time to move in this direction for Capture One. The, the design that we have created around uh, the iPad itself and around the, the, the form factor uh, of the iPad, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a real labor of love. Like we worked with a yeah. number of photographers and we tested out many different things um, and we landed on something that um, you know, ha takes real advantage of the, of the form factor and some of the, some of the affordances that you get in a, in, a, in a device like an iPad while at the same time bringing uh, really powerful features, and um, and at the same time, you know, we've got a whole list of things that we want to work through in the <laughs> in the next few months that include um, uh, the cloud syncing, and they also include uh, tethering. So we, we can we can clearly see how how you know this becomes more and more powerful. But but our our, our starting point is a very very uh, good one, and also a very, very interesting, you know, visual treatment that we're using uh, for iPad that is it, it is, it is different from the desktop, like it's not like the, the, the iPad app, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like, you know, we took the desktop app and we and just ported it, it into an yeah. iPad, it, it feels like something that was, um, 
design uh, with the iPad in mind. The big thing for us is we're, we're really excited about being in, uh, in where we are uh, right now. So, you know, Capture One, we, for, for the whole history of Capture One, we have, um, we have focused on, on, the, on the desktop uh, version of, uh, of Capture One. And, uh, and having had the insights that we had in the, in the last couple of years about how the, the photography workflow was evolving and the huge investments that we made uh, last year in being able to, to, to have, uh, you know, firstly an, an, an iOS uh, app uh, specifically for iPad uh, at this time, uh, ready to, to ship in, in, in only a few weeks. Um, uh, and also having made investments into, into cloud to, to, to launch our, our first uh, cloud product. Uh, plus all of the you know improvements that we made to the to the to the core uh, to the to the desktop product uh, over the last year, uh, you know we we feel incredibly excited about where we are and, and where we're taking uh, Capture One in the next uh, in the next few years. If you have followed this channel, you know that I am a big fan of Capture One. I've been using it for several years now. I've been covering it for a long time. Sure, there are other options in terms of having a raw editor. There are other software applications, but one thing that I really love about Capture One is the tools that it provides in terms of editing both color and exposure. There's something very organic about the way that it works. It's something that allows me very intuitively to get results really quickly of a very high quality standard. And that's one thing that I love. I also love the batch exporting. There's a lot of things that are more on the pro side of things, which makes sense because that's where Capture One has come from. Now I'm going to be honest here. There's just a few loopholes that have been open for a while that would keep me from just using Capture One exclusively. And today we have closed one of those loopholes because now Capture One offers cloud syncing. So the way this works is we now have a cloud storage server that is going to enable you to sync up your edits that you do on the iPad with the desktop. So you can work on both platforms and the edits will sync. So this is going to be $4.99 a month. So for $5 a month, this is the starting plan here, you're going to get storage for 1,000 images. Now you have unlimited transfers. So if you need to take some images out of the cloud that you're not working on, that's fine. But that's what your limitation is. And this gives you a solution now for being able to edit mobily. This is a huge deal for me. When I travel, sometimes just taking a laptop and have it, it's just a much bigger thing to carry in a lot of airline seats that just depending on how big your laptop is, it's not really practical. I much prefer to work on the iPad. So this is something I'm really excited about. Another thing that I want to mention is this is just the first release. So Capture One have also announced that they have plans in the future for the iPad app for things like tethering, masking, as well as layers. So those will be coming in future updates. Speaking of updates, this is actually something that I asked Raphael about. It's something I've been curious about for a while. I've never been to Copenhagen. I've never seen their offices, met their staff. I know a few people who work for Capture One. So this is one of the questions that I had for him. I wanted to talk about what their approach was to software development. This is what he had to say. Yeah, a large percentage of the, of the company are people that will self-identify as, as, as photographers. Uh, and, uh, and, and the rest of us, uh, we are photography curious, uh, as I like to, to call ourselves. Uh, but it, it runs through our DNA. So, you know, the, the, you can really feel that. You can see that on our walls. You can see that through our photography comp competitions. You can also see it in our in our day to day uh, dialogue. Um, you know, cafeteria humor about you know f stop jokes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, <laughs> which are which are things that um, you know they, they, they really distinguish us. And uh, yeah, we, we think we think both uh, long range and, and, and short range. So you know, of course, for our for our major releases, the ones that we do towards the end of uh, of, of every year. Uh, we start thinking about 12, maybe 14 months in advance about, you know, what are some of the, you know, big uh, blocks of work that we want to accomplish so that we incorporate those into, into a meaningful uh, major release. At the same time, one of the, one of the uh, philosophies that we have incorporated into, into the way how we run Capture One is that we, uh, we, we operate under a, a principle that we call release when ready. Uh, so one of the things that you might have noticed is that in the last couple of years, and particularly last year, we started to accelerate the pace uh, of releases in between major releases. So, so, uh, so as soon as something uh, that is new, that is, is, is ready to be used, uh, as soon as we have packaged that up, we will put it out uh, into, into, the, into, into a, a release. And, you know, we have a a whole collection of you know major releases and minor releases and dot releases and service packs and so on. So you know we find we find the right methodology to 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 bring uh, any any new innovation to to market. 
but but that that's our that's our, at, at, the, at our core that is um, that is the principle that we follow release when ready uh, while at the same time we keep an eye on like what are the major uh, thematic uh, improvements that will define when a major release uh, is, is ready to be shipped. So there you have it. So the iPad app is available in the App Store today. So get your iPad and go check it out. And if you have not used Capture One for whatever reason, I highly recommend you go download the free trial of Capture One Pro 22. I think you're going to be amazed. So I will put a link to that in the show description below this video. And if you'd like to see some tutorials on using Capture One, I've got a whole playlist of those. I've done a lot of those over the years. So be sure to check that out. I want to give a special thanks to Raphael for coming on the show. I know CEOs are very busy, but he is an amazing guy. It's an amazing amazing company. Really appreciate him making time to come on here. So if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, later.